everyone. Let me first apologize that I am recording this in Starbucks, so I apologize for the background noise. Um, it's the 4th of July holiday, so campus is closed, um, kids are at home, and so I didn't have a great place to record the video. So again, my apologies about that. Um, I did want to make some comments on um, something that we learned about when we studied historical thinking back in Unit 1. So one of those five C's that we read about was contingency. Um, contingency is an important element of historical study that often goes overlooked. Um, we read in that unit as well, in the first chapter of the textbook, uh, the idea that the past is a foreign country, meaning that the context for the way things, uh, excuse me, the way people thought about things, the way people acted and behaved were completely different in the past, even in the same place that we're living now. So even in Albuquerque, for example. Um, people thought about things differently in the past. Um, also, we need to recognize that people had agency and choices in the past. I think that seems like it, it should be taken for granted, or it goes without saying, but we have a tendency to want to take things as having been inevitable when we study the past. That is because we know how things turned out. We know what choices people ended up making. We know what the impacts of those choices were, what the consequences were on other people, other uh, structures, other events, and so on. And so, again, it can be really easy for us to think that everything was just inevitable. Things had to turn out the way that they did. But when we think like that about history, we completely take away the agency of the people who were involved in the events that we're studying. An example that I've seen a lot of um, on the timeline and also in journal entries is the idea that um, uh, Diego de Vargas's reconquest um, was inevitable. Now, people don't always say it that way. They don't always use the I word um, that causes historians to get up on their soapboxes like this. Um, but what they did, what uh, many of us do comment, is that um, if Vargas had not enacted the reconquest when he did, then the timeline of New Mexico his, uh, history would have been set back. Um, something would have kind of damaged the uh, line of events that we know of. Um, that's true, it's not wrong. Um, but it also, that, that kind of thinking, also kind of takes for granted the idea that things had to work out the way that they did. That somehow a reconquest had to be enacted. Um, we know that it was. So there is this, this sort of constant um, tension, I guess, when we study the past between the facts and the evidence, which we always have to stick to and interpret, and this notion of contingency. So the problem then becomes how can we grant contingency and agency to people in the past without um, stepping away from the actual realities of the past and facts. Um, many historians ask counterfactual questions. They call them counterfactuals. So questions like, what if Diego de Vargas had not um, successfully reconquered New Mexico? in 1692, 93, 94, etc. Um, what would things look like then? Um, and those kinds of questions can be really helpful for us as long as we recognize that, of course, that's not the way things actually happened. But asking those questions helps us to think about other possibilities, helps us to understand why things happened the way that they did, rather than just thinking that that's the way they had to happen, that they were somehow destined to be that way. Um, so, again, thinking about Vargas, then, um, it's important to realize that uh, it wasn't foreordained, or it wasn't correct or right, that Vargas reconquered the Pueblos, that he reconquered the New Mexico colony. Um, the Pueblos, of course, had their reasons for um, finally giving in. Some of those were due to the use of force and violence. Um, in other ways, there were certain groups of Pueblos uh, around Santa Fe, um, the Zias at one point decided as well that maybe an alliance again with the Spaniards made some sense because we are dealing with issues of drought, we're dealing with raids from nomadic groups like the Apaches um, by the uh, uh, period of time right after the reconquest, of course, the Comanches moved into the area, youths had always been uh, uh, moving in on this region, and so there were contests over the area that we know and love as New Mexico. People laid different claims to it for different reasons, 
And many of them all felt that they had, uh, they had a right to those claims. So, again, taking a step back and trying to understand the complexities of what was going on at that time, um, we know that people made decisions about what was going on in Reconquest, not just the Spaniards with their use of force, but also the Pueblos with their decisions about um, when it was time to throw in the towel, when it was time to stop resisting, and whether it made sense to do that. Whether we thought we might, we being the Pueblos, thought we could get something out of an alliance with the Spanish. Um, again, thinking of counterfactuals, um, what might New Mexico look like if uh, the conquest had not been successful? How would we think about the Pueblo Revolt differently if there had been no conquest 12 years later? And we see it uh, in a much stronger way when it appear in more history books beyond just New Mexico history. Um, it already appears in a lot of uh, kind of, I don't want to say mainstream, but just uh, American history books. Um, that you'll find in your U.S. history classes. So, um, again, mostly I want to just bring our attention to this issue. It doesn't just relate to the Reconquest. Um, that was an example that I've seen a lot of, so I brought it up. Um, but it relates to everything that we study in the past. All of the decisions that people make. Decisions that um, uh, Manuel Agnico made, for example, about whether or not to surrender New Mexico to Kirby and the Army of the West in 1846. Um, so, uh, you know, again, that wasn't inevitable. That was something that did happen. And you have to think about why um, he would make that decision. Um, what was in it for him? What are the different perspectives and complexities to look at? And so I think this underscores then, um, I don't want to say the difficulties, but the realities of historical study. And it's not just memorizing some stuff that happened in the past, but it's trying to figure out and put the puzzle pieces together. Um, why did things happen the way that they did? And why did people make the choices that they made? How could we um, learn from that? How can that help us better understand the local society that we live in today? All right, hopefully that's helpful and interesting in some way, and hopefully the background noise wasn't uh, too distracting. Again, I apologize for that. I hope you're having a great week, and I look forward to continuing our study of New Mexico history today.